action. Hi, everyone. I'm Adam Gold. This is the Canes Corner Podcast, and I have my uh, I have two friends of mine who were at the game last night. We have Jay Kumar, who's my uh, my soccer podcast boo. Um, again, I always like to tell everybody that Jay has made me a a, a better soccer fan. Uh, he's trying hard. I don't know if it's working, but he's trying hard. Uh, and Brandon Stanley, who you've done this before, Brandon, uh, hockey writers. Uh, by the way, on Twitter at Real J Kumar and at B W Stanley. So follow them uh, for whatever reason. They're both wonderful people. Um, all right, you guys were in the stands last night. I was, uh, I was rinkside, which is very cool, uh, and I'm not going to complain about the NHL and their uh, their anal retentive ways about what we rinkside were allowed to, how we were allowed to sit. But I'm not going to complain about that. It was just amazing to be there. So, Jay, let me let me throw it to you first. Um, your thoughts on just the the presentation of it all for uh, at Carter Finley Stadium. So, I mean, I'm trying to compare it to other outdoor games that I've watched on TV, but it looked amazing. I mean, just visually, the the way they set up. The ice, the graphics around the stadium, the extra scoreboards. I mean, it was just – it was a stunning event to be at. Um, you know, did it feel like the NHL may have cut some corners because it was a smaller market? Uh, maybe. I don't know. But you couldn't hear anything in the upper deck. Uh, they – you know, I don't know why they didn't really pipe in with the Carter Finley PA system. Um, but – Wait, you couldn't hear was, the PA in the upper deck? It was extremely soft. Like you were like, it, it was hard to hear. Um, really? Yeah. So that wasn't great, but overall it was awesome. Like, I mean, just being there, it was an event. Like, I, I guess there was a hockey game, but it was more about just <laughs> uh, like the experience of being in something like that. It felt big. Um, you know, there was an energy in the parking lot. There's an energy walking into the stadium um, in the stands, there was just a buzz. And I, I don't know how many people like paid that much attention to the game, but I know that everyone was very proud to be there. And it was one of those bucket list events. I think I feel really grateful as a Canes fan to have been able to be a part of. Before I throw it to Brandon for, uh, to answer the same question, where, where did you sit? <laughs> my, my, uh, my two boys were in section 10 row H. So where were you? We were in 30. So um, right under, I guess, what is it now? North Bay State Tower, okay. uh, whatever it is, <laughs> right under the press box, um, probably like seven rows from the top. So we were pretty high, but I will say even there, the sight lines were good. Yeah. Like you could see the game really well, which I was surprised about. All right, Brandon, where, first of all, where were you sitting uh, and answer this, the exact same question? So we were section 24 row F which basically okay. meant we were second row. Like when the Hurricanes came out to kick the soccer ball around and warm up, they were 10 feet away from us. So we were right <laughs> by the tunnel where they came out and everything, which definitely added to the experience because when they came out with the fire and everything, I mean, they were right there. I got some great videos and stuff, and it was – it's a spectacle, right? Like the hockey game at this kind of event is almost kind of secondary just because you're – of the environment. And that's what it's all about. It's all about the entertainment value and – getting to do something like this, basically. I don't know. Um, I couldn't have told you much about the game from where we were because we were pretty much like ice level. Right. Um, so we were, you know, watching the boards a lot, which was kind of a struggle because even then we're, they were like, the one closest to it was, was the one that was very pixelated. Yeah. So we that was... like, yeah. So we're watching Get the, one fixed. Like, oh. Get the video they... board fixed. I think they're starting Monday, right? Gosh, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, all good. But either way, we had an absolute blast. It was just, you know, we kind of said after the game, I was like, you know what? If the Hurricanes have another stadium series game, I might just watch from home. But I can always <laughs> say I went to the first one and it was amazing. Yeah. You know, again, like I didn't know that you couldn't hear the PA. Uh, in the upper deck, my, again, my my, uh, my kids didn't tell me that. Um, yeah. 
It was but, soft. I mean, you could hear it, but it was definitely not like it would be when you're at a state game or when you're, right. you know, so you can actually like fully hear everything. I it's didn't like think Derek. It, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I didn't think it was that loud, even down where we were either. Yeah. Like well, Wittenberg and, um, and Thompson, like I couldn't hear them intro the team. They cracked me up. I, well, we were on the air at the time, and it was our plan to um, to actually have a conversation over them as they were introducing the team. And then I was going to kind of narrate how the teams walked in, but the uh, the sheet that we got that told us what was going to happen had no relation to what actually happened. <laughs> it seemed, it seemed and, and, like I don't even know why people would care about this, but it seemed like the NHL decided at the end, at, you know, at the last minute, like, all right, no, we're going to do it this way instead. Uh, so the teams basically came out together. And right. they were supposed to come out capitals first, at least on my sheet, and maybe it was a really preliminary sheet because, frankly, and this is a little inside baseball, there were a lot of things that were supposed to happen on my sheet that never happened, uh, and who knows. Um, and I don't know that that has anything to do with Raleigh or if it's just – uh, we decided to change it, and the sheet I had was not an updated sheet, and that could be really that could be an R problem, not even a uh, not yeah. even a problem. Um, the I thought the presentation from where I sat, and it was diff it was different because I was frankly too close to the ice, uh, and I know people how can you be too close to the ice? I would much rather be a little bit further back and be able to see more of the actual game than to be sitting where I sat. I know Mike and Tripp were right on the glass, and I'm sure that was pretty cool, but there's no way they could see either corner from where they were. Zero chance they could see either corner. Um, but I do think that the closer you are to the ice, like I saw Jacob Slavin yelling at Frederick, Le, I can't even pronounce his name, Le Courier. I mean, yelling at him, for wanting a penalty. I've never seen Jacob Slavin yell before. So right. I don't even know what I what I was like, whoa. And he was working him. And during one of the timeouts after a Hurricanes penalty, uh, the one where Brady Shea was sent off for mm -hmm. next to, who was it, Tom Wilson when he fell? Yeah. I mean, Wilson just fell. There was no – I didn't see anything. I saw a replay. I didn't see a trip. I didn't see a leg get out under – Wilson just fell, and Shea was next to him. And Brindamore was working Lacouille. And actually, he wasn't even his call. It was the other referee's call. So there was a benefit to being that close. Um, but I think for the most part, it was just set up so well inside the arena yeah. for the game. And the venue, I thought, was great. Yeah, the video board, I was hoping to have a good video board uh, to look at because the internet on the floor wasn't very good. So I was using a hotspot. I couldn't run uh, video, and I could. I didn't have access to a monitor. Mike and Trip were in front of theirs, uh, and there was nothing. I was trying to utilize that and trying to lean up and see what I could see from uh, from my from my little stool. But um, so it was watching the game was a little bit of a chore from where I was, uh, but I'm not I'm not going to complain complain about it at all. So what about the experience of? Um, game day uh and this t this takes into account everything brandon i don't know what time you got there what was traffic like what was the scene like in the parking lot uh all of that and then when did you get inside carter finley we'll start go start to finish so we kind of had a nice little workaround we parked in a park and ride that was maybe a mile from the stadium but it was basically just at the tail end of where the traffic really started so right. we had a little bit of a walk. We said, you know what, that's fine. But getting in and out, we walked to the car, got in, and drove off. <laughs> like, it was <laughs> super easy. i say it's a little bit of a veteran move right there. So we yeah, didn't have any issues. Very solid. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have any issues with traffic. But um, we got there, I, I want to say around four, four, between four and five at least. Um, got to go see the concert and shoot pucks. I, I was with my buddy that – me and him both played hockey for a long time. So we were like, let's see how bad we suck these days. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I mean, it, I think he alluded to this before. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. That's Jay. 
Jay, Jay Kumar. Kumar. It says I'm it right sorry. there. The real <laughs> Jay Kumar. He's the real one. Not it's even not, the fake. It's not showing on my screen. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, I think Jay, Jay Good point. <laughs> I think Jay said this before, but like the energy and just the vibrance of like the entire, I mean, there was a buzz in the air, right? And it was just from the moment we got there, I, I started getting goosebumps and it was just something great to be a part of that I'm going to remember for a long time for sure. Yeah, I mean, I I, I agree. Um, traffic sucked, uh, <laughs> but uh, it, you kind of think of it this way. I think my friend Richard uh, Averett, salt of the earth, uh, mentioned, you know, if the worst thing that happened was some traffic, it was a pretty yeah. good event. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, keeping that in perspective, we were hoping to get out there at four. Um, we ended up getting parked around five, uh, but the mm-hmm. exit was quick. I mean, we got out immediately and we're home in like 20 minutes so egress was great ingress wasn't but um i mean it was it was the lots were packed yeah. uh, we were we ended up I mean, i've mean, i come to state games you know for over a decade and pnc i've never seen the lot that full um all the way like i was we were in west chase so you know where the ramada in is yep. we were that lot and it was full and completely really? packed. There wasn't a single parking spot by the time. Um, they weren't even letting people go past that lot. They had blocked it off. They're like, nope. And so it was it was nuts. I mean, it was, but it was great. Uh, we had a, a great time. There was about a dozen of us um, that, that tailgated together. Uh, it was fun to, you know, had buddies drive up from Charlotte just to come to the game. And so it was, it was really cool. And then walking in, kind of, it, it was interesting because we were obviously as far away as possible. And so you'd walk in and as you got closer, it started filling in and you'd see more cars and then you'd get to the stadium lot and then the arena lot and then into the line. And then I mean, the lines to get in were, were nuts. I'm, I'm, people just at a certain point moved the metal barriers and walked past security and just walked in because <laughs> they were like, I'm not waiting in this line. And the security just looked and was like, yeah, whatever. And so it just, yeah. So it just kind of like literally the metal barricade turned it sideways and just walked right past it. Cause that's um, reassuring. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it was awesome. Well, we didn't I mean, have a I major just, incident, right? I think we no. were, I think we were pretty good. Yeah. So, so the person I saw getting worked on in the parking lot at the very end of so, the game, but it was somebody was like getting CPR. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, as for the traffic, I didn't want to believe the NHL either, but the Hurricanes and the NHL set out, uh, a, I guess, a plan at the beginning of the week, encouraging people to arrive before two because of the tailgate scene that they knew would be. Mm-hmm. And they didn't want people to sit in traffic. And they actually tried to scare people. That, and they said, if you don't want to be in your car seat at the start of the game get here early plan out plan on it being a day but Uh, so maybe maybe we thought that was a ploy to get more money out of people to buy stuff i have no idea but i don't know but it was crazy the traffic was crazy but there weren't like there were multiple lights on edwards mill or on um durley to blue ridge that weren't manned by police officers they were just on the standard light signal Mm-hmm. So there wasn't even traffic cops until you got to the Wade ramp. Right. And it's like, you know, it's going to be backed up there. Like it, it, they had a plan. I just don't know if they fully considered, you know, the plan. Um, I think, I, I, so. I think the other issue was that for people who go to state games, I know Jay, you go to state games, you know yeah. where you're working. Everybody, basically you have a, a spot. And you go to the same lot all the time, pretty much. Right. Well, and people know where they're going. Well, the other problem with the parking, I don't know if you know this, but like we we saw the parking pass of you, you had to pre buy all of it. Yes. But it told you everyone the same entrance. So you, <laughs> like, so it, it literally said like Edwards Mill. So everybody that bought a parking pass, if you didn't like do a minute of research or like, talk to somebody you were going down edwards mill so everyone was trying to go in the same entrance instead of using the other ones and so that that added to it 
And then people started like making up their own rules. Like, I'm going to try this exit. I'm going to try this entrance. And then they're like, you can't come in here. This is only for handicap parking, or this is only such and such. And so it, it that was a ball drop, but honestly, it was cool. I mean, I, it, it being stuck in traffic sucks, but right. it also kind of added to this is special. Yeah, more, uh, this doesn't yeah, happen. Build suspense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More time with loved ones. All right, so right. let me move on to segment two here. We're already behind. Um, good. No, it's good. It's fine. Um, Brandon, what did to, what did last night mean? In, in the grand scheme of things, what was the significance of it? This is actually something I wrote about yesterday uh, morning. And I said, right. you can at, follow right. Twitter at, at BW Stanley. I'm, I'm 26. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the 26. Yeah, Eric bad. Cole, man, big Eric Cole guy. I understand. Got to see, got to see he him. Was there last night. Yeah, I got to talk to him a little bit. Anyway, um, this isn't something I, I don't even know how many just like casual hockey fans probably even watched last night. You know, like the stadium series game has lost a little bit of its luster. It's been going on for nearly a decade now, and it's just the Winter Classic. I feel like still holds a little bit more value to people. Um, and creates a little bit more injury just because of the exclusivity and you only have one per year on new year's day, you know, but for like a local, from a local standpoint, a, I feel like in a way it sort of validates hockey in Raleigh, North Carolina and to see the environment that was created in like almost 60,000 rabid hockey fans right here. I just feel like it shows the rest of the NHL community that hockey really does belong here to me. And it's going to have a, again, I, I think it has a bigger impact locally just because hopefully you expand your reach a little bit. Maybe there's some new fans that were created last night that otherwise wouldn't have seen a hockey game. And I think that in itself is worth it to have an event like that, you know? Jay, what do you think? Um, it, it, yeah. I mean, Brent kind of hit it on the head. I think it was a, a really important event locally. I think, you know, it, it not to get, you know, too poetic or anything, cause I'm not, but these type of signature events kind of signify, you know, back to normal. Um, if we think about when we were supposed to have this event, mm -hmm. like, and everything that happened to get to this point, like, it's almost like, okay, we're now back to where we started and let's build. Um, and, and I think, you know, there's some kind of fate aligned to it be the 25th anniversary and to have, you know, all of it just not just then, but a team that is not an up and coming team in 2019, but an established presence in the league as one of the best teams in, in hockey. Um, you know, all of those, factors culminated into it being um being a really important day locally being important day another another check box for the franchise you've done it all now you've won a cup you've held a draft you've had an all-star game now you've had an outdoor game and each one has been incredible um you need to think it's interesting the the whaler stuff is awesome like it's always a nice little throwback great logo but you don't hear that you didn't hear any of that on the broadcast you, you know and you check the highlights this was a hurricanes event um and i think that's important um you know the franchise is here and it is the carolina hurricanes not the former hartford but whalers yeah john isner uh, uh, came down to our broadcast location to say hi to trip and he was wearing uh just a, a black hartford whalers hat but there really were very few yeah. see, you know, very few sightings of anything Hartford Whalerish. Um, I keep telling this story, but I just think it's it's worth it. I remember I got here the same year the Hurricanes did. I, I was about six months behind them. And I started working at then 850 the Buzz in really early March and started hosting by the end of the month. And uh the Hurricanes uh they made the playoffs that year. <clears throat> That's the year they lost to Boston in yeah. six games in 98. And so we're talking about it because, hey, uh, the hockey team that is eventually going to be living in our backyard was playing in the playoffs. 
so, and I kept hearing from callers when we used to take callers. Um, oh, hockey's not here. We, we don't care. We don't like it. Uh, this ain't us, you know, all that. I'm not going to do a fake Southern accent. Right. Uh, but that's what we heard. And I kept saying, I mean, I think it's, I think that's your personal opinion. I don't think that's true. Um, I think there are a lot of people here like me who moved down here that love the sport, that grew up with the sport that will yeah. eventually embrace the team. And what for me, and we still get this, I still get this some today from people when we're talking about the key talk too much games. I'm like, well, they're, they're winning all the time. I mean, your team ain't winning. So let's talk about the Canes. Uh, I, I threw that in. I don't really say that, um, <laughs> but I think it, um, and this was the culmination of 25 years of dealing with that. And I know they won a cup. I know they played for another, I know they've hosted the All-Star Game and all those things. Tonight was different. Well, or last night was different. Last night was, it's an arrival of a market. Right. They, they, they forced the Hurricanes to do a lot of different things to get the All-Star Game. Bettman put a lot of pressure on right. Carmanos and all that to get season ticket sales up. Remember, the Hurricanes had won a cup in 06, got to the conference finals in 09, and still the season ticket base was not high enough in order to get an all-star game. They had to, had to get all, over all of those things. And a lot of those things had to happen here again because they had to rebuild everything when Tom Dundon took over. Um, we could talk about the reason why they rebuilt everything in a second that isn't named Tom Dundon, and I'm not trying to not give him credit. I think he gets huge amounts of credit nationally and locally for everything that's happened. But, man, last night was a big up yours to the people who didn't think hockey was going to work here because yeah. I mean, it's almost 60,000 people in there. There were, I mean, I thought the, the, the separation was, or the breakdown was overwhelmingly hurricanes. I expected yeah. it to be a lot more Washington. My feeling was man, 85, 90% Carolina. Um, I know my son's section had a bunch of Capitals fans in it, but what are you going to do? I mean, I wanted the Capitals fans to be here. I wanted right. our vets to be here. Um, yeah. But that, to me, it was it was just like, we are here. And, you know, as long as the Centennial Authority State and <laughs> the Canes work it all out, we ain't going anywhere. That's the way uh, that's the way I looked at it. All right. Let me let me ask you one one thing, because um, I was alluding to it. And this is not something I wanted to talk about, but it's, I think it's appropriate here because the game we can talk about the game for like just a few minutes. Um how much is Rod Brindamore responsible for last night? Brandon. I mean, go ahead. Let's go Brandon first. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, he is the icon of this franchise, right? Like, the most iconic shot in the history of this team is number 17 left in the Stanley Cup, right? And what he's been able to do since he took over as head coach, not just – putting the guys and instilling, I guess, a system that works to their strengths as a forechecking, fast-paced hockey team. But as a leader that you know, every single guy in that locker room would absolutely run through. I mean, he should be in the Hall of Fame. He's well-recognized throughout the league. Rod the Bod. I mean, he, I don't know how to evaluate it, but it's a ton of credit. <laughs> I don't know what uh, metric we're using here, but I mean – Brendan Moore is the Carolina Hurricanes, so absolutely. He deserves a ton of credit, just like Tom Dundon, who has done a phenomenal job since taking over of making this team a Stanley Cup contender, just like Sebastian Ajo, Andre Sveshnikov, Martin Natius, these homegrown star players that have put the Hurricanes on the map and in the conversation among the top teams in the league. You go down the list, Darren York, the draft team, uh, Eric Tulsby. I mean, we could do this all day. But, yes, Brendan Moore – He's an icon in Hurricanes history. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Jay. Yeah, I mean, Rod, it, it, you go back to when he got here um, as a player and then to stick with the franchise, it, this is almost a, a celebration of his journey as much as anything else in terms of, you know, he made Raleigh home um, in a way that I don't even think he probably would have envisioned when he got here from Philly. Um, and has, has 
been such a staple in the community, not just for the team. Like I, my favorite Rod Brindamore story is I was going to Cadoba and um, right on Edwards mill and I'm walking in and this Jack dude jumps out of his chair and runs to the door to hold the door for this old lady with a walker and it's Rod. And he, I was like, didn't say anything. And then he went back and sat down with his wife and continued to eat his burrito bowl. Like that's who he is like that. Like the head coach of a professional franchise and Jersey and the Raptors and like his number one like thing is just to think about other people. Um, and as that has built, you know, his, the foundation of the team, the identity of the team is kind of his work ethic, his commitment to doing things the right way. Um, I don't think you can fake it. I think, you know, we, we can talk about Bill Peters, but there's a reason this team became good pretty quickly when they had a leader that they could believe in. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these pieces were there with Bill, um, but, you know, not, he wasn't able to do it. And I think it's because he cares about the city. He cares about winning here, not just winning. And that matters. And I think it galvanizes a community to want to support the team and, you know, be a part of something like that. First of all, it's a great uh, Kidoba story. Um, I think it's just, I think it's funny that you remember what Rod had. Did, did, did he have rice? He was just, I was just, yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious. Cause so. if he had a burrito bowl, he was probably low carb. So yeah. <clears throat> maybe he didn't want to do the rice. No. Um, like I talk about him all the time and it's, uh, I run the risk of him being nauseated by it because I know uh, he checks a lot of these things out uh, because he likes it. Um, you know, he, I, I was surprised he had told me that he was listening to the uh, 25th anniversary podcast. Like I get a text from him. He goes, I liked that. That was a great episode. I'm like, gosh, I don't need that kind of pressure. I really, I really, I really don't. Um, yeah. I'll, I've said so much about him. I'll just say this. And I've said this before. Um, he didn't, he didn't want to be an NHL head coach. He wanted to be this team's head coach. It, this matters so much to him. This market, this franchise matters so much to him. And it's not because it's his or anything like that. Uh, he has no desire to see a street named after him around PNC arena. He has no desire. He would fight against having a, a statue of Rod Brindamore holding the Stanley cup out in front of the stadium. He has no interest in that. He didn't want to be the head coach of the metropolitan division in the all-star game last year or this year. He has no interest in those things. Zero. He would have more interest if he was allowed to bring his coaching staff. If he could have brought Tim Gleason and Jeff Daniels with him to the all-star game, he would be all about it. It would matter. It doesn't matter to him because the people around him, he thinks should be getting as much or more of the credit that he gets. Uh, Chris Huffon on the bench, the video coach on the bench in the third period, when he's never on the bench, tells you everything you need to know about Rod Brindamore uh, and what how he views the world. It's always about people and others and not about him. And I'm like, I didn't even realize how – how incomplete in retrospect I wrote this when they basically, when they were in the playoffs for the first time. And it's one of, one of the things, my favorite, one of the favorite things that I have ever written when I, it just occurred to me that Rod makes the players on the team. He makes everybody around care as much about everything as he does. And that is his greatest gift as a coach, as a person is that, he was, he's able to translate his care to everybody else and get them to go along with him. And I think that's one of the secrets of this team. Um, and I didn't realize then even how incomplete that was because I really only talked about it in a hockey sense. Right. Uh, but it's everything. He just cares about people. Let me just throw one more thing before I ask you a couple of quick questions about the game and then we'll wrap it all up. Uh, Brandon Stanley and Jay Kumar are, uh, are here. Um, I had a conversation with somebody close to a uh, – well, I don't want to give too much away, but let me just say this. In Around the NHL, 
there are a lot of people, a lot of players who like their head coach. I mean, it's just common. You like your head coach. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't like your head coach. But I would say that 90% of the players in the NHL just exist with their head coach. Whether they like them or not, they just exist. He's the head coach. My understanding of the dynamics of this team are that they love their head coach. And he is maybe the biggest selling point that the Carolina Hurricanes have when it's players coming or players staying. Mm -hmm. And so it gets me back to the window of winning a Stanley Cup. The window is rot. And that doesn't mean that the next coach can't do a lot of the same things, but the window is rot. And as long as he is the head coach, they will have a chance because I think they will have really good players for as long as he is the head coach. It's only got two more this year and one more year left on this contract. Tom Dundon, get to work. All right, uh, Brandon, do, do you even want to talk about the game? <laughs> oh, no, I, I still know what's going on. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm down to <laughs> <laughs> we got we, we're in like minute uh we're in like the 34th minute and by the way my son just came out and told me man you was leading three nil um they're oh, man they're good they, De Gea saved i anyway, we can talk about that later he's great so. De Gea is having the best he might be the best keeper in the uh in the prem this year uh he has been tremendous uh and rashford scored again nobody cares right now uh thought thoughts about uh thoughts about the game brandon <laughs> Well, it was pretty dang dominant. I mean, uh, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the Hurricanes' kind of new look top six. Obviously, they only switched two players. Um, oh, right. They put Sveshnikov on the top line and Teravainen on the second line, I guess. And I know we're not supposed to number the lines. Right. Rod, Rod called out the uh, the reporter in the press conference last night. He goes, "What? What? What? which line are you talking about? Second line. It was great. I was laughing. <laughs> my fault. My fault. No, but uh, the last two games – Pretty good early returns because uh, against Montreal, the Ajo line was obviously snapped off. Seth Jarvis for his career hat trick. And then last night, that line still got a ton of chances. Andre Sveshnikov, God bless him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, at least twice a game at this point, he's staring at the rafters or at the sky as of last night, um, just wondering what he's got to do to score a goal. But he's playing great hockey. So, I mean, if he keeps that up, you got to think yeah. at some point it's going to happen. Um See yeah. all April and May and June. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, absolutely. Um, but the Terravine and Natchez connection last night was fabulous. Jess Mary Kokaniami has been playing great for over a month now. Yep. Um, and then defensively, my God. I mean, I know the Capitals are down their best player and one of the most feared goal scorers of all time, but they didn't get anything last night, like anything. So it, it was a complete performance really was. Uh, in the second period alone, Washington did not get their first scoring chance until there were 90 seconds left in the second period. I'm, I, I've never seen that. Like, yeah. nothing. And Freddie had to be good at the end of the period because there were a couple of chances there. But, I mean... He was chilling. He was the best seat in the house. <laughs> yeah. I was like, is he, is he awake? Like, he wasn't <laughs> awake in the third period. That was a bad goal. That's, yeah. It's an yeah. goal to allow, but all right, it was already four nothing at the time. Jay, your your thoughts on the game, the way they played, or honestly, because the game was secondary a little bit last night. I'm glad they two dominated. points, man. Yeah, two it, yeah, exactly two points. Um, but it, it, same, I think right? they kind of yeah the, the they, I think the Caps kind of came out a little bit feisty. Like I think the first Good. opening exchange was, um, you know, and then once it turned into a hockey game. There was only one team that was going to win. Um, when it was still an event, there was some back and forth, but then it turned into just another hockey game. And I think the Canes just basically told the Capitals, like, this is what you have to look forward to in May. Like, round one, right now, I think we're slated to play them. And nope. it's going to be a they're out. They're outside. They're out I mean, now? Well, they by no, e even by points, they're behind. Okay. But they also – uh, they have like two they games, four or... games. Yeah. Florida and Washington, uh, their points percentage is low. Florida is yeah. on pace right now for 86 points. Washington is on pace for probably 91. 
or something like that, that's not going to make the playoffs in the uh, in the Met- not in the Metro, not in the East. It's not going to make the playoffs. Yeah. You have to be. I know, like six, sorry, I know there's like six teams yeah. within like five points of each other right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean they're in they're in the mix, but right they're now they're outside uh, they're outside the line. Um, like I, Buffalo and Detroit are strangely enough right there. Uh, yeah. I'll, I have a hard time believing that Detroit's going to trade Dylan Larkin, considering they have a chance to make the playoffs. God, he would be a perfect fit. <laughs> yeah, well, I have my uh, I have my designs on on another. Uh, another player, uh, a center uh, with a right shot who used to play here, uh, whose team is falling apart in Calgary. But I don't think yeah. Elias Lindholm oh, is available. Um, <laughs> I'm serious. I, if if I were Tom Dundon, if I were if I were Dom Waddell, I would be on the phone with Brad Treliving tomorrow and say, "What will it take to get him?" Because if you're looking at a hockey trade, he has one more year left on his deal. But if you're looking at a hockey trade, you can trade for him and then extend him in the off season at a really good number. Uh, you yeah. know, for him, eight and a half, you could extend him for and then extend Aho at nine, nine and a half, and have those two guys, one and two down the middle for the rest of those contracts. Right. And you don't think Aho's next contract starts with a one, though? I don't think so. Okay. I don't. I don't think so. Um, I think Brock Besser's contract kind of – that surprised me. It was it 8-5, right? Something like I that. could see Aho at 9-5. I don't think Aho's going to get to 10. Okay. Uh, so that's – just my feeling on that. I don't think it's going to – and if it gets to 10, the cap's going up. You can afford Aho at 10. And Lindholm right. – again, I, I shouldn't even say it. I, I, I don't work for the team, thankfully enough. So I'm not, uh, I'm not in danger of getting anybody in trouble. But that's the guy that would uh, completely change the way this team looks, especially down the middle. And Lindholm was starting to play with so much feistiness when he was here. The trade was ultimately a good trade for Carolina. It really reset the franchise. It, it gave them uh, the player like Dougie Hamilton on the back end with dad for three years. <clears throat> and now, I don't know if they have a better version of Dougie Hamilton. I'm not sure. Uh, Hamilton's having a very good year for the Devils. Right. And a different player, a different skater. Uh, but I also think that we have seen Brent Burns really become Brent Burns again. Yeah. It, awesome. it, it, it took great. About, four months for that to happen but burns burns is so much better today than he was in the first two months of the season and it has nothing to do with points i think he's just playing a much better game um i still think Carol- yeah. well, i think it takes some time like you know coming into this system from a really down place in san jose to yep. to be able to jump in like once just to get up to this level expected and then now that he's here I mean, he's he's a Rolls Royce, man. He's awesome. He is. He's tremendous, and he's a great teammate, man. Again, it's it's the culture that that uh, that dude in the varsity jacket built uh, here. That was a sweet jacket, wasn't it? I was yeah. talking about that last night. I would pay a lot of money for one of those. Yes. Apparently, they're available on the eye for the low, low price of one thousand and twenty-five dollars. Are you serious? A thousand twenty-five? I think that might be Rods specifically, though. I, my buddy that works there told me. Um, co-host oh, of my wow. podcast, Tracking the Storm. Matt Selma, my boy. <laughs> All right, nice. Tracking the Storm, Mike. A thousand dollars for that? <sighs> Apparently. Damn. I thought about asking him for it. <laughs> I did. I thought about asking him for it, but he said he likes it. So. I'm sure he does. Yeah. He yeah. Like. I was I was glad to wear it, and then he made the joke that it was free. Like, <laughs> come on, come on! All right. Um, overall, that was a pretty good night, man. I'm glad I was there. I'm glad you guys were there, and I'm glad you guys yeah, did this. So, uh, thank you for hanging out. Appreciate it. Uh, I hope this was everything that you wanted it to be, <laughs> <laughs> including the soccer. Of this. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, and I'll uh, I'll see both of you. Uh, maybe not together, but individually soon. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thanks for having me, buddy. Take, Take care. care Bye. Sorry for catching me.